Coming up on 11 minutes after the hour of 6 o'clock on a Tuesday morning. As usual, it's time to say good morning to our resident dermatologist, Dr. Andrew Ford. And he joins us another one with another one of those interesting skin conditions. And this one is called Becca's Nevis. And we're also going to talk about Nevis of Ota. Yeah. These, these are interesting topics, but they're all basically skin conditions. Yeah, they're, they're basically skin conditions where you see increased pigmentation uh, in a large patch. And you know there are lots of people. There are lots of people with things like this, and it's just a matter of getting the names. But they're natural, but they do cause some concern, especially when people keep uh, looking at you and wondering what's going on. So yeah, well, uh, what's going on with <coughs> this? Yes, this is just the the left side of the chest of a of a youngster. He developed a a mark on the chest which wasn't there at birth, but came on just around nine or ten, and you know that that was a cause for, of concern for his mother, and that's the Becker's nevus. So it's really a collection of melanocytes or pigmentary cells in the skin and it goes together in a group. But it's also a collection of, of hair follicles as well. And this can cause these changes. This one is in the, just in the neck, neck area, just between the neck and the shoulder, just above the clavicle. Mm -hmm. And it's a similar type of thing. But in this one, you can see that the hair is a bit, a bit thicker. Okay. Well, it looks like what some birthmarks could look like. Yes, so definitely. But but <coughs> they don't happen that early. They come on much later. Well, the you know the the bathing suit or bathing trunk nevus or the congenital nevus is mm -hmm. something that you're usually born with, and it's very hairy. Uh, Becker's is oh. a is a different version of it. Uh, it was discovered in 1948 by a dermatologist called Becker. He's an American, and he described it in two two young people. So Becker's nevus is something that you, you're not born with. Mm -hmm. It comes on during adolescence. It has to do with, with the migration of these uh, pigment cells or the melanocytes. And also hormones may have something to do with it. But it also can become uh, quite hairy as you go along. It's, it can be just some brown patches. They join together. They can mm -hmm. be speckled or they can be continuous. So mm -hmm. this just shows it on the, on the back as well. Generally, they occur on the shoulder, the back, or the chest. You can sometimes have them bilaterally, even though that's not very common. Uh, and they can also occur in other parts of the body. Mm. Uh, if they occur in, let's say, in the genital area in some youngsters, you can get an accessory uh, set of uh, testicles sometimes, or a scrotum, sorry. Oh. Yeah, so that's why they think that it has to do with the, with the hormones and the, and the migration. When you're developing in, in the, your mother's uh, womb, the, everything that's in the body is is moving to get to its right place and sometimes it just doesn't get where it's supposed to. Does it be. ever happen on the face? Well, certainly not, not the Becker's nevus, but right. the, the nevus of Ota is one that occurs on the face. Uh, you can see this young lady here. Uh, she has a, a bluish or grayish discoloration on the left side of the face. It involves the forehead and the cheeks. So the nevus of Ota actually involves a nerve, the distribution of a nerve called the trigeminal nerve, which is the fifth nerve of the fifth of the cranial nerves, and that nerve uh, controls uh, chewing and sensation to the face. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a type of uh, nevus where the cells tend to migrate in that area. And here you can see her from the, from the side, and it's quite obvious that there's this bluish discoloration or grayish discoloration, depending on how you perceive it. Mm -hmm. But it can be speckled, it can be continuous. Uh, it looks a lot like something we talked about earlier called melasma, which is mm -hmm. a, a type of uh, change that you get with the sun. And there are other things that can cause uh, discolorations on the face, but this tends to be unilateral, even though sometimes it can be bilateral. Does it well. only occur um, during adolescence? Well, this one, you can be born, maybe half of the individuals with this one can be born with it, and the other half get it around adolescence. You can see it also involves the, the eye, and it can cause discoloration of the sclera. The, the pigment cells can, can uh, migrate there. But this one is more common in women. It's seen more in Orientals, but it can be seen in black uh, individuals as well as Caucasians. And there's a lady in NCIS, if you watch that show, uh, one of the agents, she has a, an eye that looks unusually dark and she has the same uh, condition. Wow. Um, well, you know, I always ask, is there any known cause? No, there, there the isn't any known cause. Hormones. We know the cells are there and they're moving around and sometimes they're there when you're born and sometimes they, they show up uh, later. But as far as the, the cause, it's, it's not known. There are a few cases where you may see it happening in a family, but usually it's just uh, spontaneous. Do these cells move in, in across the body or, or they, they, you, you suggest that you, you get it mainly on the back, the neck and, and the shoulders? I mean, could, could these cells migrate? 
Yeah, well, during uh, development, as a fetus, the cells are, are moving, but sometimes they need a trigger to, to show themselves up. So uh, everything's moving around when you're in those nine months that you're, you're getting ready to, to introduce yourself to the world. So sometimes uh, different things can cause them to change. It's important mm -hmm. to, to realize that these things are natural and right. the, these individuals are not, are not freaks or there's nothing wrong with them. Uh, the, one of the important things is that the second one we looked at, which is the nevus of Ota, can be associated with glaucoma. So it's important to have your eyes checked uh, sometimes. But I mean, there are things that you can do. Anything that involves pigment, uh, you can, there are lots of lasers now that can reduce pigment with varying degrees of success. So, okay. and of, of course, they can be easily camouflaged with uh, cosmetics and makeup. Okay, so there is a type that affects mainly women but it's not necessarily gender specific. Yeah, both, both sexes can have it, but the Becker's nevus is more common in men than in women. Right. Very rarely when it occurs in women, you can get uh, a, a smaller breast, let's say it happens on the chest, that, that breast may be, may be smaller. Mm -hmm. The nevus of Ota is uh, one that happens mainly in women, but, and also mainly in, in Chinese, Japanese. Does uh, it go away? No, it, these, these conditions don't go away. They can fade a little bit as you get older, but they don't go away. But they're harmless, uh, except for the rare times when some complication occurs. And, you know, there are lots of conditions that cause discolorations and, and, and increased pigment. And lots of people wonder, is this going to make me uh, get a melanoma more than anyone else? And that mm -hmm. hasn't been uh, the case. These individuals uh, tend to be have a normal expectancy for, for these conditions as well. You talked about um, the, the hair in, in th within the condition. Does that create uh, additional challenges? Yeah, well, in the Becker's nevus, that's, that's the one that can become very hairy. So if you are someone, you don't really have much hair, and then you get these coarse, dark or brown hair uh, in, an, in a place, you sometimes have to take care of it. Let's say you're going to the beach and you have a Becker's nevus, uh, you may have to either shave that hair or you may also use electrolysis or laser hair removal to reduce the hair. Mm -hmm. And in that case, it's just, it just looks like a birthmark, like the congenital nevus that we mentioned. And that's one of the things that, that causes a lot of confusion. Do you have a congenital nevus? Do you have a Becker's nevus? But as I said, with the congenital one, the bathing trunk one, you're usually born with it and, and it's just there. And some people can have multiple uh, of that type and it, it can occur on large areas of the body mm -hmm. and not so much on the on the upper body as the Becker's nevus. How do most people deal with it? Well, it's more of a curiosity at first, usually for parents uh, with the Becker's nevus. And, you know, once they understand that it's natural and it's there, most people uh, deal with that pretty well. The nevus of Ota, which is on the face, is a lot more difficult. And especially since it occurs in, in women more than men, then you have to resort to makeup a lot. And there, there's some people who are just confident enough and they get used to it that they just wear it, they accept that that's, that's the way they are, that's their special, special thing. Uh, so it's really a, a psychological adaptation to what's happening to you, knowing that it's not, not a threat. So does, does Ota mean face in some language? No. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> well, the, that's the name of the dermatologist. He, he He's the one who discovered okay. oh, yeah, like it. Discovered, yeah, mm, Ota okay. discovered it in, in 1939. Oh. Mm. What are you going to have named after you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have to come up with something. Okay. The problem in the West Indies is that we see things, we, we don't really write about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we go to a conference and we realize, oh my God, that person's talking about something that I've seen and they've written it up. So we've mm -hmm. lost a lot of opportunities there in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Should I call make up one and call it Doug? <laughs> well, <that's that>. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never be able to treat that. <laughs> don't give her any ammunition at all. You'll never be able to treat that condition. <laughs> but, but um, you, you know, it's more psychological for people you're suggesting. You know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, any cosmetic discovery. problem mm -hmm. uh, is really, you have to deal with the psychology of it and the perception of the public. That's one of the reasons I've done it today because it, even though it's something that may occur in less than 1% of a population, it's still something that you may see and I think we have to be able to look at people and, and understand that they're still normal even though they may have some, some cosmetic defect. Right. Yeah, well, I've, I've seen it in, in, in people, not, not a lot, but, mm -hmm. but I've seen it one yeah. or two times and I couldn't quite understand what had happened. What, what it, what, yeah. what had happened. Um, you know, there's, there's some people though that cosmetics can't help. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, with, with yeah. the condition of being so severe that, mm -hmm. that you, you just can't powder it up or... or yeah, mm -hmm. but for the Becker's nevus and the nevus of Ota, we do have some solutions and mm -hmm. uh, at least uh, individuals with it, they should know that they're, they're healthy. 
for the Ota, which is on the face, you should have your eyes checked. Uh, for the Beckers, even though sometimes you can have, uh, you know, let's say, let's say you have a smaller breast or your or that side of the chest mm -hmm. is smaller, or you develop some unusual smooth muscle uh, benign tumor. Mm -hmm. There are all things that can be fixed and, and rectified. So okay. it's important that people don't uh, be afraid of such things. You can see your dermatologist and, and have your diagnosis because there are other things that can cause discoloration of the body and the face. It's just a matter of making the distinction and knowing what your options are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the one on the shoulder with the hair, it looked pretty serious. So mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you mentioned there are treatments. What sort of treatment would you give? Well, the, it's a matter of treating because there are two things that are growing in excess there. That's the hair and the, the pigment cells. Mm -hmm. Is so it ever raised, the pigment? Yes. I mean, the, the sometimes it can be rougher. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get a thickening of the pigmented area, or sometimes in, in men you can get acne within the within the area. Mm. So anything that occurs like that, you'd, you'd have to treat the acne, but you can remove the hair with laser hair removal or mm. electrolysis or mm. just shave it at intervals with the uh, pigmented spot. There are lasers that help to reduce the, the appearance of it. But for those who just want to do something, there are lots of waterproof uh, cosmetics that you can use that you can do some do Tell some us things. about this kind of, what are we seeing here? Is this well a that, before that and after? Well that looks like a before and after uh, with the a laser treatment that's wow. been done on, on the lady. So the Becker's nevus can can be treated quite successfully. The, I mean, sorry, the nevus of Ota is is very well treated. That is an awesome difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Usually okay. Q-switch lasers and other lasers are used, but a lot of these modalities aren't available here. Uh, for, for a doctor to have a laser, it's a, a great undertaking. They're very expensive and the duty is very high, but the maintenance is the real killer because mm -hmm. you have to usually fly someone in mm -hmm. to maintain your laser and it can be mm -hmm. very expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is it as, um, as serious or more complex as removing a tattoo, or is it? Ch uh, removing a tattoo is, it also uses lasers, but uh, they keep refining the, the modalities that are used for tattoos, because mm -hmm. a lot of times with a tattoo, you get a scar in the shape of the tattoo. And that's one of the reasons I don't personally do tattoo removal, because I'm not really pleased with the result in some cases. And uh, I don't personally want to do procedures right. which people may be unhappy with. So after. as far as you're concerned, so you get it, keep <laughs> it. <laughs> well, I think uh, as, as the modalities get more re refined, and right. especially when you're dealing with black skin, mm -hmm. uh, the various skin types and the procedure is the, is the key. So mm -hmm. in, a, in a bigger country, a, a doctor would be able to lease many different types of lasers. But right. the problem here is that uh, someone would just have, uh, have invested in one or maybe two types and they don't really have the specific type for what's wrong with you but they still uh, try to do the procedure. Yeah. Plus you but have to be careful what you're bringing back on the flights. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Uh, I, I think <laughs> you don't want to scare the, the no. few with the scanners. Is there any pain associated with this condition? No, there's no pain mm -hmm. at all. It's, it's just the the, the psychic pain of seeing mm -hmm. something or seeing someone look at you if you're mm -hmm. in town mm -hmm. and people may be staring at you or wondering, especially if it's the nevus of Ota on the face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, usually Barbadians tend to stare or to sometimes they would point. Mm -hmm. But it's just a matter of education. I think it's important that people understand that these things are, are quite normal. All right. And you, you said it, it occurs mainly in, it, it only in about 1% Yes, less the than 1% of mm -hmm. the population. But we still see some of it here. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. We still mm -hmm. see it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's important to be aware of it so that we can, we can know that <laughs> what's happening with these people. So, I mean, there, there's so many conditions in dermatology. That's one of the things, one of the beautiful things that, that these programs have shown, that there's so many different things and many different treatments that are involved as well. So with the laser hair removal, is that permanent? Uh, laser hair removal is a permanent reduction. Okay. Uh, there's no such thing as permanent uh, hair removal. No? No, the, the FDA is, has made sure that we... All <laughs> oh right, Doug, Doug's <laughs> a special case. No, that's a, but uh, the, the FDA uh, has wants to make people aware of what's av available so you get a permanent reduction. So that means the hair will be a lot smaller, a lot less noticeable, mm -hmm. but you still have hair there. But it's just that it's so small it doesn't bug you. Right. But usually with these procedures, you have to get a touch-up uh, once a year or so okay. after it's done. Mm, interesting stuff indeed. Well, mm. now we know a lot more. Yes, now know. we do. Mm -hmm. So that explains <laughs> that. <laughs> Dr. Andrew Ford, thank you for sitting, uh, shedding some light on, on, on Mr. Becker and Mr. Ota this morning. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you. Know, we, we know a lot more about that skin condition. Certainly appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh,